What is up team? Chuck with Traders War Room. I'm back at you with another video. Listen, this is your Traders War Room daily video and it's full of stocks, charts, and news. But what I need you to do right now is hit that like, share, and subscribe button and I need you to come along with us on a journey. Check the description tab. Tons of tools and tidbits right there at your fingertips to make you a better and more successful trader. Now, if that sounds good and you're ready to rock it with us, then all I got to say to you is follow me and let's go to war. We want to remind the viewer that this is not financial advice. The content is entertainment and education purposes only. You're responsible for every decision you make. We want you to have fun, use caution, and always go to war. Traders War Room is a true one-stop shop for all traders and investors. So check out some of the stuff we got going on. First up, we want you guys to check out our flagship, the Traders War Room Discord, a true one-stop shop over there. We got the real-time buy and sell alerts. We're talking options, stocks, futures, crypto, forex, live trading, Zoom classes, one-on-one -on -one mentoring. We got free and paid services. Guys, listen, we got an incredible community over there of like-minded investors. Come check us out today. You won't be disappointed. We got the Traders War Room website, okay? This is the hub for the products and services, man. You can find everything from the Discord to the one-on-one -on -one mentoring to upcoming classes we have to historical classes that you can view right on the website and a pro newsletter, guys. It's a great evolving website that we're constantly improving and refining. Come check it out today. At the end of the video, we'll talk about the upcoming classes that we got, but let's get into some real stuff right now. Let's talk about the buzz report, what's hot and what's not in the stock market. Here's your markets right across the board. Dow at 0.29%, NASDAQ losing almost two points, 1.56, and the S&P at 0.53. So definitely hoping for some jumps tomorrow, but with the news that's going on, probably going to be... A difficult day tomorrow as well here's another representation so you can kind of see the lay of the land we saw healthcare have some decent little pops today the energy actually didn't do so well as we thought it was going to but utilities and real estate sector did fairly well today so we're paying attention to some of these and hoping that with the news with russia and ukraine that we'll be able to get some pops so that we can make some money on some calls. But we're probably also looking at some puts for tomorrow as we're sure to see some downward pressure because of the shelling that's happening over there tonight. Sector performance, consumer discretionary, the loser, utilities, the big winner, real estate coming in second. Here's your futures. You know, 75% red. Remember, futures are just a glimpse into what could be. They're not set in stone. So we'll use it as a guide, kind of get a strategy both for a bullish day and a bearish day. And we'll see what happens at the bell. Your most popular tickers, SPY, of course, COST, Marvel is in there. Wheat is in there. NEO, we got X, CLF. So we're seeing a lot of industrials and some of those you know, industries where it's dealing with materials start coming in here. So we're paying attention to those. Also, you got your triple Qs. So definitely need to pay attention to some of these tickers because they're giving us a glimpse into the kind of trends that we're seeing as this Russian-Ukrainian conflict continues. Top news, pressure grows on Biden to ban U.S. imports of Russian oil. A bipartisan group of the U.S. senators introduced a bill on Thursday to ban U.S. imports of Russian oil, saying the shipments could be replaced by boosting output in North America and other places. So we're paying attention to that as well. Google suspends all ads in Russia and censorship demand grows. Google said on Thursday that it had stopped selling online advertisement in Russia, a ban that covers search, YouTube, and outside publishing partners. So once again, more Russian bans, more companies get on board with the sanctions and kind of blacklist in Russia. ICANN makes pig welfare push global amid McDonald's proxy fight. Now, this is interesting, okay? Car ICANN is broadening a push to get McDonald's Corporation to improve suppliers' treatment of pigs raised for bacon and sausage. The billionaire activist investor, who has described himself as an animal lover on Thursday, called on the burger chain to make global pledge to eliminate the use of metal enclosures to house pigment pigs. Excuse me, pregnant pigs. 
So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Usually any type of negative sentiment, stories like this usually affects McDonald's in a negative way. So we'll be looking for some puts on McDonald's going into the market tomorrow. And we got to talk about this. Okay, fire breaks out at Europe's largest nuclear power plant. Ukrainian officials report a fire at, I can't pronounce that, but it's a nuclear plant after it was fired on by Russian military. Meanwhile, the U.S. has offered Ukrainians temporary protective status from deportation. What I want you guys to understand of this is war is nasty, okay? But, you know, this is a big deal because if you guys remember Chernobyl, okay, this power plant is said to be yield the explosive power of 10 times Chernobyl, okay? So if it doesn't get under control, we could have that meltdown. And you know as well as I do, Chernobyl still is activated to this day and is not safe. So this definitely has some big concerns and it's worrisome for not just that area, but globally as well. So we're paying attention to this close. So let's look at some charts and see what we got going on, closing out this week and near term. Here's your TWR hot earnings. These are some implied percentages that are associated with each of the tickers. So we're definitely paying attention and seeing what some of these have to offer. So with stocks, I actually wanted to talk about some ETFs, okay? And these are defense and aerospace type of ETFs. And I want to talk about ITA right here, okay? ITA has been on a tear. And as you see, we had a level over there at about 108. And that was a top level resistance that we broke out of here recently. And now we're trying to find another top at about 112. Now, we cooled down a little bit, but a lot of things cooled down as well. However, these ones would be probably a good investment to go a little bit long in. And when we're looking long, we're talking about, you know, grabbing maybe shares, holding them for a while. Or, and if you go into the options, we're looking out probably like a couple weeks to months out on this. So for you guys that don't have time to check your portfolios daily and make trades and stuff like this, these particular defense contracting ETFs may be good choices for you to get into some of these because it'll provide you with, you know, some calmness and profitability while the Russian Ukraine conflict is going on. But also you don't have to watch the stock the whole time. Here's another one, you know, looking at the chart, very similar as well on an up, up tick. It had kind of cooled off again today. However, this is definitely looking like it wants to continue up. So, you know, I would assume that probably 125 hitting that area again, or at least testing it is not out of the question in the near future. And this is an interesting one. So like this one actually went away maybe like a year or so ago and then came back on the market. And it's actually cheaper than the other ones. But analysts like this one better than the other ones for potential more rapid growth, more potential in the stock market push. So at these levels right here, of course, you got a buy signal yesterday on a daily. So we're looking like this one would be a pretty decent trade. So we're looking at getting into this, come to bell, seeing how the lay of the land looks and getting in this and going long on this one. And here's just some of the top gainers since the 24 February attacks on a, on Ukraine from Russia. Just some of the ones that you want to pay attention to as far as we're talking about defense type of stocks. So pay attention to these. These will be the ones that if it's talking about defense and it's talking about, you know, protection and aerospace and stuff like that. These are ones that the analysts out there really like the best for the most growth potential. Some of the big defense contractors that are out there, RTX, okay, a lot of these ETFs, RTX is one of their biggest holdings, and we're paying attention to this. This is on a decline here recently, but we're at a, an important support level, so we're paying attention to this, looking like maybe we got a little bit more downward pressure before we see signs of reversal, but mark my words, guys. This is going to find a bottom here relatively soon, probably not too far away from this $99 area, and we're going to start reversing, and it's going to look to make its new high. So pay attention to RTX. Another one that we like is Maxar, and as you see, we kind of cool down. Everything's going to be a cool down today, okay? But I like this one for continuation. Maybe we got a little bit more of a cool down. It's going to follow the market sentiment overall. So if we have a bearish market tomorrow, we can expect this to be probably bearish and we'll want to go on puts. However, once we start to get to that reversal and the market looks like it's going to continue up, we want to go long on this one because this one's going to go up and we're going to shoot right past that $36 in no time. 
Knock. We like Knock. Knock is a well-known, established defense contract in stock. We're paying attention to this, of course, decline, but it didn't dip as low as we thought it did. It dipped down, and then the majority, the meat and potatoes, as I like to say, still finished up relatively close to its previous days. So we like this one for continuation, especially with the shelling and stuff going on. We like Knock. Now, Lockhead Martin, this thing blew way past analyst expectation, okay? You saw, you see that little breakout right there at the 390 day where you got that green arrow? This thing popped up hard, okay? And we're paying attention to this, all right? Are we due for a cool down? Yeah, absolutely. But Lockhead Martin has their trenches dug deep, okay? So this one, as long as the conflict is still going on, LMT is going to be right there every step of the way. So watch this one this one could be a good stock to follow and make some money on especially during a bearish market because we might see some bullish sentiment running into this one and i like the potential of this one ktos okay definitely a decline from where it hit up at like 22 dollars, but we're down here so what i'm curious on this one okay because we got a sell signal on the daily but i'm curious to see where we open tomorrow and if we get signs of that reversal i'm probably going to go long on this one and push out a week or two so see what this does okay because this one is cheap and it has a lot of steam coming behind it so pay attention to ktos Rio, we like Rio because it's a minerals type of stock, okay? And it popped up. Now, I don't think this is too much too soon. I think the minerals are important. People are starting to track their money into these particular stocks. I like this one for continuation. Rio is definitely on my watch list, and I'm looking to go long. My favorite semiconductor on, okay? The semiconductors have been doing so well, NVDA, AMDA, INTC, so, but I like on, okay, I like on for continuation, I like this triangle that we're about to have, we see the strong support, or excuse me, resistance at 63.33, you know, we got some, a decent little wedge type of building up here, I like this one to trickle, going, bouncing from current levels up back to the $63 area, testing it, and I think we break to the upside, I like on going long. BP, man, we thought BP was going to skyrocket today, and it definitely underwhelmed us. But with this Russian-Ukrainian crisis, you know, if you saw anything about the oil price that they spiked up, I think that BP might get a little bit of spike tomorrow. Um, we'll see what happens at the bell. I'm still bullish on this one long term. We may not have enough steam to make up the ground that we have on our call. However, I'm hoping that tomorrow is a new day and we get some volume going into these energy and gas and oil refinery stocks because you know supply and demand 101 demand is up supply is limited these things start to skyrocket so we're paying attention cisco cisco didn't perform too bad today it definitely underwhelmed uh, we were in a call earlier and the call absolutely killed it um I like this one. Uh, we almost tried to break the 57. I told you guys 57 was the area where we needed to break. And if we could break that and close above that, it's off to the races. I still think that's possible. I think we're able to hit that tomorrow. I think we track up with a, a little bit of volume and we break that and then it's off to the races. So I'm liking Cisco going into closing out this week. I'm going to close this out with Apple, okay? Apple, again, you know, uh, we closed red, we closed down, but we made higher than the day before, okay? So Apple's kind of chipping away. Um, people aren't making as much money on the calls this week with Apple because it's not moving dramatically in one way or the other, okay? It's kind of trickling, and it's not making the, the money that, you know, we were thinking it was going to, especially with some out-of-the-money calls. But, you know, I like Apple for a continuation if not this week we're definitely going to start pushing up towards that you know 170 and the 175 era here very soon uh you know the sentiment is bearish right now but i'm still bullish on apple you know if you're looking to go long in this i would look not for a lotto type of trade tomorrow but i'd be looking out at two weeks to a month on some apple get into some good calls going out at the money or in the money as much as your portfolio can handle but definitely still long apple i like it and i think it'll do well long term
something that watching is the dump on Peloton, okay? Remember last time we were at these levels, we had a huge push back up. I'm hoping that happens again tomorrow because I definitely have a call on this one. I don't know if with the sentiment going on right now, if it's going to happen, but we'll see when we uh, the bell rings tomorrow and we'll decide what we do with our particular position at that time. All right, so we're paying attention to snow. Um, it dumped pretty heavily uh, off of earnings. We thought we were going to be able to catch a bounce, and it did a little bit, but then it sank with the rest of the market. So this has our attention tomorrow at the bell, hoping for a big rebound because it doesn't have to track up, you know, the 20% that it lost. We just needed to go 5 or 6% recovery. So we'll see what happens tomorrow at the bell. And one that we got our attention on as well, closing out the week, BA, okay? BA doesn't like these bottom levels. And what it likes to do at the bottom level is it likes to reverse very sharply. So we're paying attention to this. This one could definitely give us some momentum, being a defense stock itself, also being a popular ticker. We're expecting to have some volume coming into BA. To the upside would be fantastic because I would love to take this sailing up towards $200 if we could make it there. And I think with the right volume and the sentiment, we could get there. All right, and we're going to talk about some classes we got coming up. Listen, guys, these classes are a fantastic deal, okay? $15 for pro analysis, giving you guys tips and tidbits. And you guys, every verified purchase gets a recorded version of the class. And don't worry if you can't make it live, sign up anyways. Register your seed in the Zoom and you'll be on the auto distro list. But you can always catch this too at the website and you can view it right on the website after the after the live presentation is done. It's recorded, edited, and uploaded to the website. It'll be there anytime you want to go back and catch it. First class kicking off March, we got TWR trigger points how to trade trigger points okay entries and exits for wins and listen guys i'm telling you this is going to be a fantastic class and especially if you struggle with getting into your trades and getting out of your trades and maintain profitability this is a class for you 15 dollars. you can't beat the price for the type of content we're giving you guys i'll see you there on saturday go to the website sign up today and do yourself a service and invest in yourself in 2022 and then the following week, we got the TWR trading indicators, all right? Using multiple indicators for killer profits. Listen, hundreds of indicators out of there, and they're all fantastic. But using the right ones at the right times for the right stocks in the right market, that's the difference between the professionals and the newbies. And we're going to teach you guys how to do this so that you guys can make plans and make strategies and become better and better at your craft, which for us, like-minded investors, is trading stocks and utilizing charts and indicators as confirmation sign up today $15 you don't want to miss this class go to the website it's right there I'll see you there too on 13 March all right and that's the video guys I hope you got some value out of it I hope you got some worth I hope you take some of this knowledge that we dropped on you real quick and you use it tomorrow to check out the stocks when the bell rings all right remember traders war room we look at the stock market like a war zone stocks and sectors those are our battle we do it together as a team attack conquer and destroy and we're always looking to go to war now if that sounds good and you're ready to rock it with me then all I got to say to you is follow me and let's go to war together